Logan is a 2017 American superhero film featuring the Marvel Comics character Wolverine, produced by Marvel Entertainment, TSG Entertainment, and The Donners Company, and distributed by 20th Century Fox. It is the 10th installment in the X-Men film series, as well as the third and final Wolverine solo film following X-Men Origins, Wolverine, 2009, and The Wolverine, 2013, as well serving as a reboot to the franchise and being set in its own universe. The film takes inspiration from Old Man Logan by Mark Milla and Steve McNiven, which follows an aged Wolverine undertaking a final adventure in a dystopian future. The the film is directed by James Mangold, who co-wrote the screenplay with Scott Frank and Michael Green, from a story by Mangold. Hugh Jackman stars as Logan in his final portrayal of the character after having played the role for 17 years, with Patrick Stewart co-starring as Charles Javier, Richard E. Grant, Boyd Holbrook, Stephen Merchant, Daphne Keene, in her first film role, Eric LaSalle, Elise Neal and Elizabeth Rodriguez are all featured in supporting roles. Principal photography began in Louisiana on May 2, 2016 and ended on August 19, 2016 in New Mexico. The locations used for Logan were mainly Louisiana, New Mexico and Mississippi. Logan premiered at the 67th Berlin International Film Festival on February 17, 2017, and was theatrically released in the United States on March 3, 2017, in standard and IMAX formats. <laughs> in the year 2029, mutants are on the brink of extinction, with no new mutants having been born in 25 years. An aging and weary Logan, formerly known as Wolverine, is working as a chauffeur in Texas. His rapid healing factor has faltered and, as a result, his body has aged greatly and his adamantium skeleton is gradually poisoning him from the inside out. Logan lives with mutant tracker Caliban and they care for Professor Charles Javier, who is suffering from Alzheimer's disease which causes him to lose control of his immensely powerful telepathic abilities. One day, Logan is approached by Gabriela Lopez, a nurse for biotech corporation Alkali, Transigan, who wants him to escort her and an 11-year-old girl named Laura to a place in North Dakota called Eden. Logan and Javier learn that Laura is one of several mutant children Transigan was breeding with DNA from the X-23 project headed by Dr. Xander Rice, and that upon completion of the X-24 project, Rice deemed the children obsolete and ordered them euthanized. Gabriella helped several children escape from the compound before smuggling Laura, who was artificially created from Logan's DNA, across the Mexican border. The Reavers catch up with them in Oklahoma City, but Javier suffers a seizure and telepathically freezes everyone in their hotel, allowing Logan to kill the attackers and the trio escape. On the road, they help farmer Will Munson and his family after a traffic incident, who then invite them over for dinner, and they accept under the guise of being a generational family. When a nearby pipe springs a leak, Logan and Will leave the house to fix it. While Logan is gone, Javier recalls a telepathic seizure he had in Westchester, which claimed the lives of several X-Men and injured numerous civilians. He expresses his guilt to a person he thinks is Logan but is actually X-24, a feral clone of Logan with severely limited healing factor who fatally stabs Javier, then murders Will's family and abducts Laura to deliver to Rice and the Reavers. Caliban sacrifices himself by setting off a pair of grenades to destroy the van in which he is being held captive, though he fails to kill Rice and Pierce. Logan and Will engage in incapacitate X-24, Will is injured and points his shotgun at Logan, blaming him for the death of his family he pulls the trigger, but it is empty and he dies from his wounds. Logan retrieves Laura and escapes with Xavier's body. After burying Javier, Logan and Laura make their way to Eden, a safe haven run by Richter and the other Transigan test subjects that managed to escape. Logan learns that the children plan to journey across the Canadian border and decides to leave, but when the children are intercepted by the Reavers, Logan uses a serum that temporarily restores his healing factor to intervene. Rice confronts Logan, who is revealed to have killed Raya's father while escaping from the Weapon X program, and reveals that the destruction of mutant kind was due to a genetic dampener forged by his company who then laced it within commercial food and drink products. Horrified and outraged, Logan shoots Rice dead before Pierce releases a regenerated X-24, who engages Logan. The children wipe out the remaining Reavers before killing Pierce with their powers. Logan and Laura fight X-24, with Richter helping X-24 overpowers them and impales Logan on some tree branches, but before he can finish him off, the clone is killed by Laura with an adamantium bullet. Mortally wounded, Logan tells Laura not to be the weapon she was made to be, and acknowledges her as his daughter before dying in her arms. Laura and the other children bury him then make their way for the border, but before joining her friends, Laura repositions the two branches forming a cross at the head of the grave into an X in honor of the last of the X-Men. <laughs> Hugh Jackman as James Howlett, 
Scarlet, Logan, Wolverine and X-24, a physically enhanced mutant with accelerated healing, dealing with his age, roughly 197 years, and ailment. He is one of Charles Xavier's caregivers, alongside Caliban. Mangold spoke of Logan's age influencing his regenerative capabilities, which he stated may no longer produce soft skin, so we imagined he heals quickly, still, but it leaves a scar. The simple idea was that his body would start to get a little more ravaged with a kind of tattooing of past battles, lacerations that remain of previous conflicts. Jackman indicated that he believed he was nearing the end of his run as Wolverine, and there was speculation early on that his next film could be his last. On the second page of the screenplay, Mangold spoke of Logan as, he's older now and it's clear his abilities aren't what they once were. He's fading on the inside and his diminished healing factor keeps him in a constant state of chronic pain, hence booze as a painkiller. In 2015, Jackman requested fan input for the direction Wolverine's story should go in the next film, while seeming to confirm that the project would serve as his farewell to Logan. To prepare for his role, Jackman ate a minimum of six meals per day, when working with trainer Mike Ryan. Ryan stated that an average workout session for Jackman lasts up to three hours, beginning at 4 a.m. Jackman stated, it's going to be very different, very different in tone and hopefully different to anything we've done. Regarding the more personal tone Jackman noted that's always been really his dilemma, coming to terms with who he is. Jackman has also explained that comedian Jerry Seinfeld was indirectly responsible for his decision to stop playing Logan after 17 years, with Jackman stating, I was having a chat with Seinfeld about a year ago, he was talking about why he finished Seinfeld. He said he'd always had this feeling and belief that you never know when either your energy or the audience's energy is going to dip over into people saying, oh, please go. Jackman accepted a pay reduction to ensure that the film would be produced to receive an R rating. Jackman also plays a clone of Logan called X-24, who is a soulless, feral, younger version of the original Wolverine who represents the Weapon X past that haunted him. Patrick Stewart as Charles Javier, Professor X, a mutant who is the world's most powerful telepath, founder and former leader of the X-Men. Charles's telepathic abilities have become unstable due to age and his suffering of Alzheimer's disease, and at times he does not even recognize Logan. During the events of Logan, Javier is cared for by Logan and Caliban. Regarding Javier and the themes of aging and loneliness, Mangold said, we've seen these characters in action, saving the universe. But what happens when you're in retirement and that career is over? The really interesting thing to me, or a place to dig that hadn't been dug, was the idea of mutants when they're no longer useful to the world, or even sure if they can do what they used to do. Their powers are diminished like all of ours are by age. Our Charles is a very sweet character in this film. I think he's always been an incredibly sweet character. With the addition of his own physical fragility in this movie, he becomes an incredibly powerful paternal figure in the movie. Logan is more of a reluctant one, I think you can easily guess. Stewart remarked that, this is probably the end of this franchise for me. But the thing about science fiction and fantasy is that you can never, ever say it's the end, it's over. One month before the film's US premiere, Stewart concluded that he will retire from the role of Charles Javier, stating that there will never be a better, a more perfect, a more sensitive, emotional, and beautiful way of saying au revoir to Charles Javier than this movie. Boyd Holbrook as Donald Pierce, Transigan's relentless, calculating and intense head of security, and leader of the militant Reavers who is sent to retrieve Laura, which brings him into conflict with Wolverine. Holbrook said of the character, he's an innovative engineer and he's a big fan of Wolverine. He just wants to hang out with him. There's a lot of surprising stuff in it. Mangold praised Holbrook's performance, saying that he is just a fabulous actor. I wanted this film to feel intimate and real and truthfully acted and I wanted very much to break away from the kind of bloated feeling I've gotten from a lot of comic book movies. Steven Merchant as Caliban, an albino mutant who can sense and track other mutants, who is helping Logan take care of Javier. On Merchant taking the role, Mangold mentioned, I'm always interested to find the thing that looks most interesting on the actors. Steven is a huge man. One of the things that is so wonderful filming with him for a character like this is that he's a good six inches taller than Logan, and huge over Patrick. The little kid in the movie would come up to basic his knee. So there's a wonderful sense of scale, but he has heart too. Mangold concluded by stating, so that was a wonderful energy to enter the movie, and someone who instead of turning things into their own energy kind of joined ours. Caliban was previously portrayed by Tomas Lamarquis in X-Men, Apocalypse. Richard E. Grant as Xander Rice, the surgical head of Transigan, whose father was killed by Logan during his escape from Weapon X headquarters at Alkali Lake, in X-Men, Apocalypse. On the character of Rice, Mangold stated, he's the puppet master behind Pierce and the Reavers, and has a much larger role in the sense that he's actually the kind of brilliant mind that is trying to grow mutants. Daphne Keen as Laura, X-23, a mysterious young mutant, who is very much like Logan, 
given that she is a female clone created from his blood, which was shown to be retrieved by the Essex Corporation at the end of X-Men, Apocalypse. Eventually Transigan acquired some of Logan's DNA, and began making clones to use as weapons. On Keen's portrayal of Laura, Mangold mentioned, if anyone could steal a movie from Jackman, it would be Daphne. She carries, all the time, a slight strangeness. Sienna Novikov served as Keen's stunt double. In an interview with Digital Spy, Mangold stated, Keen was 11 years old when we were shooting. She's a remarkable kid. Her parents are actors, and she's kind of a very modern kid. Very physically capable. Incredibly gifted as an actress. I mean, it was a huge risk for Fox to allow me to make a movie where the third point of the triangle was built upon someone so young. Mangold stated that the worldwide search for an actress to portray Laura was one in which he was seeking someone who was bilingual because I wanted a Latina kid, one who was between 10 and 12, and was a credible child. He later stated of Laura that, she's an 11-year-old girl equipped with all the volatility, instability, mood swings, shadows and potential violence of our hero. I thought that was a giant mistake. Additionally, Eric LaSalle, Elise Neal and Elizabeth Rodriguez appear as Will Munson, Catherine Munson, and Gabriela Lopez, Doris Morgado, David Calloway, Han Soto, Jason Janeo, Krzysztof Szyzynski and Alison Fernandez appear as Maria, Danny Rhodes, Valet, Richter, Mohawk, and Delilah, respectively. Though Mr. Sinister does not appear in the film, Kinberg confirmed the scene has correlation to how Laura was created, and that he will make an appearance in a future X-Men movie. Equals equals production equals 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 development equals equals equals. In November 2013, 20th Century Fox began negotiations for another solo film starring Wolverine, with James Mangold in negotiations to write the treatment for the film, and Lauren Schuler Donner returning to produce under the Donner's company. He also stated, I do want to do it with Jim and with producer Lauren Schuler Donner because we had such a great experience. I'm really proud of the Wolverine, 2013. Later in the month, Mangold announced that the pre-production aspect of the film had not begun as of yet, nor the writing process, though he furthered this by stating, I would say I'm not there yet, but I have taken finger to key. Let's say that, there's been typing, and ideas, and talking amongst all the principals. Shortly after the release of The Wolverine, Mangold spoke of a potential sequel with the aim of not converting it into a Will the World Survive film, while also stressing his need not to make the same picture again. I've got a good angle on it, but I'm not ready to talk about it yet. In December 2013, Jackman spoke of nearing the end of his tenure as the character, while stating that the film was in the very early stages of development. Jackman also revealed that Mangold and he had begun speaking of potential ideas, adding, Jim Mangold and I were literally on the phone last night talking about ideas but there is no script and no writer yet so it's a way off. Mangold would later reveal that Jackman was very involved in developing the story, saying, Hugh and I have been friends for almost 20 years now, and he was there every step of the way. For Hugh and I, the first goal was to construct something more intimate. Hugh often brought up the wrestler and Unforgiven as examples. I used those references as well as others. I pitched to both Hugh and the studio that I had an idea for an extremely bloody, existential Little Miss Sunshine. Also in March, 20th Century Fox set a release date of March 3, 2017. Mangold boarded the project as director, Jackman signed on to reprise his role, and David James Kelly was hired to pen the screenplay. In April 2014, Jackman spoke about his ambitious feelings for the character of Logan, while mentioning that they can go further than what they achieved in The Wolverine. Jackman also expressed his feelings of finality with portraying the character of Logan, while in terms of storyline, he explained that nothing had been decided as of yet. Jackman concluded by highlighting that the success of the script development would determine whether Jackman would return at all, I haven't signed on. I'm genuinely at that point where unless it's better than the last one I'm not going to do it. I think it has to be better. I can still see where we can improve on the last one. I love the intimacy of that story. I liked the small stuff. I liked that it was a little unexpected. By April 2015, Michael Green had taken over screenwriting duties, with Mangold still actively overseeing the script development process. Jackman spoke of Mangold's plan to start filming the next year, though he he expressed uncertainty as to filming locations. Also in September, Mark Milla, creative consultant for Fox, confirmed that Mangold's film would be a loose adaptation of the old man Logan story, something that was hinted at earlier by Jackman. In October 2016, the title of the film was announced as Logan. In January 2016, Jackman confirmed that Mangold had a full screenplay, albeit not complete. The following month, Lee Schreiber expressed interest in returning to portray Victor Creed, Sabretooth, with Jackman himself mentioning Mangold's vision to Schreiber. After the film's release, it was revealed by Jackman that originally 
Originally the script had the character play a role in the film, but that Sabretooth was excluded from the final screenplay. By April 2016, Mangold had chosen Boyd Holbrook to portray the main antagonist of the movie, the chief of security for a global corporation that is pursuing Wolverine. Also by April, Richard E. Grant was cast as a villainous mad scientist, and Stephen Merchant had also been cast. In May, Eric LaSalle and Elise Neal were cast supporting roles, and Elizabeth Rodriguez entered negotiations for a small but key role. Also in May, producer Simon Kinberg revealed that filming had already begun, and confirmed that the movie would be R-rated. Regarding the setting and tonality, he stated, it takes place in the future, and as you and others have reported, it is an R-rated movie. It's violent, it's kind of like a western in its tone. It's just a very cool, different film. Equals 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 filming equals equals equals. In March 2015, Mangold anticipated that filming would begin early next year. Prior to filming, the film was given the working title of Juarez to lower the visibility of the production. By March 2016, Mangold was preparing to shoot in New Orleans, Louisiana, with a starting schedule of May. Producers Kinberg, Schuler Donner, and Parker chose to film in Louisiana because of its popularity as a filmmaking location, as well as its filming incentive, which includes a 40 tax credit for movie productions, but requires a minimum spend of $300,000. Principal photography began in New Orleans, Louisiana on May 2, 2016, although it was originally scheduled to start shooting on April 25, 2016. Other filming locations in Louisiana included the NASA Mashad plant in New Orleans East, Amite City, Husser, the Green Lawn Cemetery in Hammond, Materi, and the Faraday Plaza Shopping Center. Exterior scenes were filmed along Louisiana Highway 15. A crash scene was shot on U.S. Route 425, just outside of Faraday, Louisiana. Producers Kinberg, Schuler Donner and Parker chose to film in Faraday because of Concordia Parish's beautiful countryside and green cornfields. Scenes were also shot at Sicily Island High School and a house in Sicily Island. From June 14 to 28, 2016, production was scheduled to take place in Natchez, Mississippi, to film a scene that required the casting of truck drivers. On July 12, 2016, production moved to its third major filming location, New Mexico, which ran through August in Albuquerque, Rio Rancho, Abiquiu, Tierra Amarilla and Chama. According to the New Mexico Film Office, production employed about 130 New Mexican crew members and two New Mexican cast members, as well as 600 extras. Scenes were shot at the Northern Meadows neighborhood of Rio Rancho, while a few miles further down King Boulevard, an elaborate set was built with a toppled water tower that was used for exterior shots. Principal photography concluded in New Mexico on August 13, 2016. Equals 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 post production equals equals equals. Post production began subsequent to filming closure on August 23, 2016. Film editor Michael McCusker described the process of going through dailies and breaking them down, and figuring out the structure of one scene as being complicated. McCusker stated that the task was time consuming on the front end, but added, I am looking at the back end experience with Mangold as the more important experience. I don't want to be searching for stuff for him, I want to working towards getting the cut right. Chaz Jarrett was the overall visual effects supervisor and visual effects company Image Engine worked on most of the visual effects on Logan. Equals 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 music equals equals equals. In July 2016, Cliff Martinez was announced as the composer of Logan's musical score. However, in December 2016, Mangold announced that Marco Beltrami, who had previously collaborated with Mangold on 310 to Yuma, 2007, and The Wolverine, 2013, would score Logan instead. Track listing. All music composed by Marco Beltrami. Total album length, 57 to 31. Equals equals influences equals equals. Director James Mangold has said that Logan's influences included visual reference points of cinema, citing Shane, 1953, The Cowboys, 1972, Paper Moon, 1973, The Gauntlet, 1977, Little Miss Sunshine, 2006, and The Wrestler, 2008. Mangold spoke of cinematography-based framing, while noting that he does not necessarily think about the comic book-related sort, instead highlighting the variety of stylistic influences that went into Logan. These influences include film noir framings and classic Hollywood filmmaking styles, as well as the Germanic expressionist filmmaking style of the early part of the last century, which Mangold stated has a commonality with comic book art. Mangold highlighted strong foregrounds, playing things in depth, you have to make an image say more within that one image. Using the image of Logan at a funeral as an example of his stylistic logic, Mangold concluded by mentioning the aspects within modern filmmaking, 
primarily everything in close-up format. For Logan, his aim was to set frames that are descriptive and evocative of comic book panels and classical filmmaking. Equals equals release equals equals. Logan premiered at the 67th Berlin International Film Festival on February 17, 2017, in Berlin, Germany, where it was selected to be screened out of competition alongside The Bar, Final Portrait, Midwife, T2 Train Spotting, and Viceroy's House, before screening in the United States, where it was given a wide release on March 3, 2017. In October 2015, Fox confirmed that Logan would be released in the IMAX format. In the US, Canada and UK, the film was preceded by a short film, Deadpool, No Good Deed. In it, Deadpool notices a man getting robbed, and springs into action, but first has to change into his costume in a phone booth. As he is finishing up, the man is shot, the short film ends with Deadpool commenting on the strangeness of the phone booth's presence, and eating the man's Cherry Garcia ice cream. The teaser met with positive reviews. Ryan Reynolds posted Posted an extended version of the teaser via his YouTube channel the day after the film's release. Equals 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 one last time promotion equals equals equals. Prior to the confirmation that the then untitled Logan would be his final appearance in the X-Men film franchise, Jackman initially repudiated such rumors. Jackman stated that he was inspired by Michael Keaton's performance in Birdman, and wished to portray the character of Wolverine until his death. In July 2015, Jackman posted an image of Logan giving the middle finger with a claw to his Twitter. The image, coupled with the hashtag own last time, signified that the film would be his last appearance as Logan, and officially announced his decision to stop playing the character he had had been portraying for the past 17 years. During an appearance on The Doctor Oz Show in May 2015, Jackman clarified the confusion over the conflicting sentiments, by stating bluntly that the film would be his final portrayal as the character. He said, This will be my last one, it is my last time. It just felt like it was the right time to do it, and let's be honest, 17 years. I never thought in a million years it would last, so I'm so grateful to the fans for the opportunity of playing it. I kind of have in my head what we're going to do in this last one. It just feels like this is the perfect way to go out. Jackman has also explained that Jerry Seinfeld has convinced him to quit the role stating, he said to me, when you are creating something it's very important not to run yourself dry. It's not about finishing on top, necessarily, but making sure you're creatively, still got something left, which propels you into the whatever's next. In December 2016, Ryan Reynolds revealed that he had been trying to convince Jackman to re-sign for a Wolverine and Deadpool crossover film. Urging fans to campaign online, he stated, I want Deadpool and Wolverine in a movie together. What we're gonna have to do is convince you. If anything, I'm going to need to do what I can to get my internet friends back on board to help rally another cause down the line. Hugh Jackman is one of the best human beings. Part of the reason I want to do a Deadpool, Wolverine movie is not just because I think the two would light the screen on fire but I genuinely love the guy. In January 2017, Reynolds and Jackman spoke about the proposed project. Jackman stated, I'm hesitating, because I could totally see how that's the perfect fit, but the timing may be wrong. Jackman later stated that he would not reprise the role for a team-up film, specifying, no, and Ryan is currently sleeping outside my house. Laughs look, if that movie had appeared 10 years ago, probably a different story, but I knew two and a half years ago that this was the last one. The first call I made was to director James Mangold. I said, Jim, I got one more shot at this, and as soon as Jim came up with the idea and we worked on it, I was never more excited. But, it feels like the right time. Deadpool, go for it man, do your thing, you don't need me. Jackman did, however, state that he would be willing to keep playing Wolverine if the character had been brought into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, elaborating, if that was on the table when I made my decision, it certainly would have made me pause, that's for sure, because I always love the idea of him within that dynamic, with the Hulk obviously, with Iron Man but there's a lot of smarter people with MBAs who can't figure that out, you never know. At the moment, honestly, if I really did have them there, I probably wouldn't have said this is the last. It just feels like this is the right time to leave the character. Equals 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 marketing equals equals equals. In April 2016, Fox decided not to showcase its upcoming movie releases, including Logan, at Hall H at San Diego Comic Con, as the studio felt it could not prevent the piracy of custom trailers and exclusive footage routinely screened for fans in attendance. On October 20, 2016, 20th Century Fox released a 90-second teaser trailer to promote Logan, following a six-second sneak peek the prior 
day. Later that day, 20th Century Fox released an international red band version of the trailer, featuring slightly more graphic violence than the original. Empire Magazine chose the trailer as the best trailer of the year. The Hollywood Reporter's Aaron Couch praised the trailer, and stated, If Logan delivers on the promise of this trailer, it will be a true rarity in modern superhero movie making. James Dyer of Empire heralded the trailer and its director, James Mangold, by stating, We've had a veritable feast of great trailers, from John Wick to Rogue One, Assassin's Creed and A Cure for Wellness, but none, no matter how impressive, have been quite so artfully constructed as this glorious first look at Mangold's Logan. Forrest Wickman of Slate called the trailer surprisingly mournful. Equals 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 home media equals equals equals. Logan was made available on Blu-ray, DVD, and 4K on May 23, 2017, and was released on Digital HD on May 16, 2017. Equals 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 Logan Noir equals equals equals. On April 29, 2017, James Mangold announced via Twitter that a special black and white version of the film entitled Logan Noir, which would have a limited theatrical run in U.S. theaters, an event set to begin on May 16, 2017. This version of the film is included on the digital HD release and also included on the DVD and Blu-ray. Equals equals reception equals 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 box office equals equals equals. As of May 29, 2017, Logan has grossed $226.1 million in the United States and Canada and $381.4 million in other territories for a worldwide gross of $607.5 million, against a production budget of $97 million. Worldwide, the film had a global debut of $247.4 million from 82 markets, the biggest of 2017 and the fifth biggest ever for Fox, as well as the second biggest R-rated IMAX debut, with $20.6 million from 1,068 screens. The film grossed $440.9 million in its first 13 days of release, surpassing the entire theatrical gross of The Wolverine, $414.8 million. North America. Predictions for its opening in North America were continuously revised upwards, from $55 million to as high as $80 million, with box office pundits noting that the figures could climb even higher. Fox, however, was more conservative with its estimations, predicting an opening in the mid-$60 million range. Logan received a record-breaking release across 4,071 theaters, the widest for an R-rated film, breaking American Sniper's 3,888 theater count. It is also the widest R-rated IMAX release, across 381 IMAX theaters. 580 theaters were premium large-format screens. Two days before the film's release, ticket-selling site Fandango reported that the film was outpacing all previous X-Men movies, except Deadpool, at the same point in their sales cycle. Logan earned $9.5 million from Thursday night previews, which began at 7 p.m. This marked the second biggest previews in the X-Men franchise, behind only Deadpool's $12.7 million. On its opening day, the film scored the biggest R-rated March opening, with $33.1 million, breaking 300's record, as well as the third biggest R-rated debut after Deadpool, $47.3 million, and The Matrix Reloaded, $37.5 million. It is also the biggest R-rated opening weekend that did not take place on a holiday. Approximately 8.2 of the total ticket sales came from Canada, with premium large formats comprising $12.3 million, 15, from 558 screens, and IMAX comprising $10 million, 12, of the film's total opening weekend. Males comprised a bulk of the audience demographic during its opening weekend, with 63, while females comprised 37, with 83 of the audience being between 18 and 44 years of age. Critics noted that the R rating, the second ever for the X-Men franchise, could be a hindering factor in the film's mass appeal. However, by the time of its release, the film was acclaimed by critics and raved by audiences. Good reviews, anticipation from fans, as well as lack of competition were highlighted behind the film's robust opening. According to a poll conducted by Fandango during its opening weekend, 71 of moviegoers said that more superhero films should be rated R, while 86 were interested in seeing a more violent, adult X-Men film that weekend. Furthermore, 96 said they were excited to see Hugh Jackman, 95 Four were intrigued to see Patrick Stewart reprising his role as Professor X, and 76 were interested in watching newcomer Daphne Keene. In its second weekend, the film dropped 56.9. 
grossing $38.1 million and finishing second at the box office behind newcomer Kong, Skull Island, $61 million. In its third weekend it made $17.8 million, finishing in third behind Beauty and the Beast, $174.8 million, and Kong, Skull Island, $27.8 million. In its fourth weekend it made $10.1 million, dropping 43.1 from the previous week and finishing fifth at the box office. Outside North America, outside North America, Logan was projected to open as high as $105 million. In North America, though, forecasters believed that it could post an even higher opening if it were to overperform in major markets, most notably China. It opened day and date in almost every major market except Japan, where Doraemon the movie 2017 was released. Fox ultimately decided to postpone the film's release there in order to avoid competition. Through Sunday, the film exceeded expectations and posted a five-day opening worth $152.5 million from 81 markets. This is Fox International's third biggest launch of all time, behind X-Men, Days of Future Past, $172 million, and Avatar, $164 million. It debuted at No. 1 in 80 markets. It broke the record for the biggest R-rated IMAX release ever and the biggest 2D IMAX opening, with $10.6 million on 687 screens. In Brazil, it recorded the biggest opening for Fox, and the seventh biggest opening overall, with $8.2 million. The top openings were in China, $46.3 million, the UK, $11.4 million, Korea, $8.2 million, and Russia, $7.1 million. In India, the film debuted with an estimated 17 crore, $2.5 million, net, equating to a gross of $3.4 million, on 1,400 screens. According to Fox, that was the highest debut for any X-Men title in the territory, marginally ahead of X-Men, Apocalypse. While the debut was not enough to break any significant records, it ranked as the second biggest opening weekend for a Hollywood release in the January-March quarter, behind Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice. In China, it became the first ever film, both local and foreign, required by a new law, promulgated by the film promotion law, to feature an age restriction warning in its marketing material. It went into effect on March 1, 2017, despite 14 minutes of the film's running time being truncated. Despite such restrictions, the film managed to debut with a better-than-expected $48.9 million, including previews. According to data from Ent Group, Fox reported $46.3 million. This marked the second-biggest X-Men opening in the country, trailing behind only Apocalypse. Tracking showed that the film opened with 85,000 screenings on Friday, which increased to about 95,000 on Saturday and Sunday, from a 9.98 million attendance. Included within that total was $4.4 million from 388 IMAX screens. Equals 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 critical response equals equals equals. On review aggregator Rotten Tomatoes, the film has an approval rating of 92 based on 292 reviews, with an average rating of 7.9. 10. The site's critical consensus reads, Hugh Jackman makes the most of his final outing as Wolverine with a gritty, nuanced performance in a violent but surprisingly thoughtful superhero action film that defies genre conventions. Metacritic, another review aggregator, assigned the film a weighted average score of 77 out of 100, based on 51 critics, indicating generally favorable reviews. Audiences polled by CinemaScore gave the film an average grade of A on an A plus to F scale. Many reviewers noted Logan as one of the greatest superhero films of all time. Scott Cholera of IGN gave Logan a score of 9.7, 10, and called the film, an emotional, heavy picture, but it's also an uplifting one that reminds us that it's okay to fight for something more, something better, and perhaps the best X-Men movie yet. AA, Doubt of the AV, Club gave the film an A, and said the film manages to deliver the visceral goods, all the hardcore Wolverine action its fans could desire, while still functioning as a surprisingly thoughtful, even poignant drama, a terrific movie, no, comic book, qualifier requ Required. Chris Nashawati of Entertainment Weekly gave the film a B and called it both the most violent film in the series and the most sentimental one. When it's not showering you in blood, it's trying to make you spill tears. Peter Bradshaw of The Guardian gave it four fifths, stating it is more like a survivalist thriller than a superhero film, and signals its wintry quality with the title itself and compared Wolverine's hitting of his truck during the film to Basil Fawlty from Fawlty Towers. Kyle Smith of the New York Post also gave the film 3.5, 4 and said the film recognizes that superhero movies such as last year's forgettable X-Men, a 
apocalypse have become meaningless spectacle, I'd rank it beside X-Men, Days of Future Past among the best X-Men entries. Brian Tolerico of Rogerbert.com stated, Logan has stakes that feel real, and fight choreography that's fluid and gorgeous instead of just computer-generated effects. Most importantly, Logan has characters with which you identify and about whom you care. It's not just, great for a superhero movie, it's a great movie for any genre. Brian Trude of USA Today said, Logan is the Dark Knight of Marvel Comics, a gripping film that transcends the comic book genre. Peter Travers of Rolling Stone gave the film 3.5, 4, and called it a hard-ass, R-rated rager that explodes with action. Amy Nicholson of MTV called it a phenomenal, throat-slashing, gut-stabbing superhero movie. Jermaine Lucier of io9 said, Logan is beautiful, sophisticated, and still a kick-ass superhero film. Robert Cotter of Flickering Myth said, It isn't just a good superhero film or a fantastic blockbuster, it's an exceptional movie period. Michael Rothman of Consequence of Sound called the film a game-changing masterpiece. Matt Donato of We Got This Covered said, It's not just one of the best superhero movies ever, it's a damn fine cinematic representation of the human condition in all its agonizing forms. Joe Morganster of Wall Street Journal said, it's the best superhero film to come out of the comic book world, and I'm not forgetting Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight. Jackman's acting as Wolverine has been lauded with wide acclaim and his performance topped the Hollywood Reporter's greatest superhero movie performances of all time list. On the other hand, Anthony Lane of The New Yorker reacted negatively, saying if ever there was a time to hang up Hugh Jackman's claws, that time is now. Mara Reinstein of Us Weekly gave the film 2.5, 4 and specified, in a lukewarm review, that the film loses its way during the 20 minutes too long journey. For all the breathless talk about how Logan transcends the superhero genre, there's nothing groundbreaking about a road trip movie in which adults try to elude the bad guys to protect a super special child. Michael Phillips of the Chicago Tribune gave the film two quarters and said, Logan is deadly serious, and while its gamer-style killing sprees are meant to be excitingly brutal, I found them numbing and, in the climax, borderline offensive. Stephanie Zakarek of Time Magazine said, the grim side of human nature is all over James Mangold's Logan, but that doesn't necessarily make it a good movie. Equals 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 awards and nominations equals 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 future equals equals. During production of the film, Jackman and Ryan Reynolds have both spoken about the possibility of a Wolverine and Deadpool crossover in the Deadpool sequel, despite the fact that Logan was meant to be Jackman's final appearance as Wolverine. In February 2017, Jackman said that he had made up his mind and would not be appearing in a Deadpool sequel. His reasoning was that he felt Logan had the perfect ending to Wolverine's story arc. Mangold stated that with the introduction of Laura, X-23 into the X-Men film universe, he would like to see the character appear in future films, and would want to be involved should that happen. Simon Kinberg, producer of the X-Men film universe, later stated that the studio had plans for future movies that would be revealed soon, and that there might be another film featuring X-23 in the future. Although Patrick Stewart had stated that Logan would be the final time he played the role of Professor X, he later stated that he would be willing to return to the role in Deadpool 2 or the Legion TV series. Equals equals references equals 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 external links equals equals official website Logan on internet movie database Logan at box office mojo Logan at Rotten Tomatoes, Logan at Metacritic, Logan Review at Al Movie by Lexi Cummins, Rating 3.5, 5.